Senator McCain's blood for oil disaster this afternoon in Denver. I will have an energy policy that will prevent us from having ever to send our young men and women into conflict again in the Middle East. Yes, he just said what you thought he said. Our young men and women have been sent into conflict in the Middle East for oil and might yet go again. Worst person. The Republican candidate for president of the United States today directly tied the Iraq war and the prospects of further American bloodshed in the Middle East to the price and availability of oil. Our third story in the countdown, what was once the far right's favorite example of supposed left-wing tinfoil hat conspiracy theory is now part of John McCain's campaign platform. It was near the conclusion of a town hall campaign event this morning in Denver. McCain had been criticizing his Democratic rival's plans to withdraw troops from Iraq. But then McCain decided to make a pitch for his energy policy, which his campaign plans to unveil soon. Listen to what the senator sees as a huge selling point. My friends, I will have an energy policy that we will be talking about, which will eliminate our dependence on oil from the Middle East, that will, that will then prevent us that will prevent us from having ever to send our young men and women into conflict again in the Middle East. It will then prevent us from ever having to send our young men and women into conflict again in the Middle East. At a town hall, at a town hall at a Jewish center in Denver, at one of the forums that are supposed to be full of candidate-friendly questions, so Senator McCain actually managed to back into this all by himself. For reaction, let's bring in MSNBC political analyst Rachel Maddow, whose own show airs weeknights on Air America Radio. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Keith. Is there any other inference to draw from what Senator McCain said here? I bent over backwards. I've been thinking about this since I heard about it, and I have come up with a way. Yeah. I have come up with a way this could make sense if what he meant was that his energy policy will result in us not having enough fuel to put in our vehicles to get our troops to the Middle East. Then he could have not been talking about what we think he was talking about. I don't think that's the case. But um, that's, as, that's, as, that's as close as I could get. Well, astoundingly, he, he, his people then screwed up the, the excuse, the rationalization. His press secretary went to reporters and said, no, 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 no. He's not talking about Iraq. He was talking about the first Gulf War, which was to some degree had something to do with, with, with gas. I think the, the, the guy who just pulled one right out of you know where and saw those burning Kuwaiti oil fires, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, these incredible flames, that picture. I think that's what he saw. And then McCain was asked directly, were you, when you said this, were you thinking about the first Gulf War? And he answered, no. Right. So now we've eliminated the only other vague possibility in this. The, right? the press spokesperson actually said what Senator McCain meant was that it was the first Gulf War. And McCain said, yes, I meant it was the first Gulf War. And the press spokesperson said uh, it was the first Gulf War that was about oil. And McCain said, no, 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 the first Gulf War was actually about Saddam invading Kuwait. And then he backed off that again further and said, no, I wasn't thinking about that at all. So I, this is, I mean, the, the press corps has not been enthusiastic about following up on John McCain gaffes. This seems to me like such a big one on such a big important issue, and it's on tape and there's video, that it has to be followed up on. So he's either going to need a new explanation or he's going to have to just run with it and, and defend this idea. I think he might actually end up defending it. Well, I mean, this, this raises the, the point that Cheney and Bush have used recently, oil, the price of oil, the idea of al-Qaeda getting a hold of the control of oil as a justification for staying in Iraq. And then that brings you this to McCain. And, and five years ago, anybody who suggested there was the slightest hint of a connection, a rumor of a hint of, a, of an innuendo of a connection between going into Iraq and the price of gas was considered um, a lunatic, unpatriotic, terrorist lefty. Yeah. How and why did this suddenly change into John McCain's campaign, campaign platform? I, I honestly think that the, the most likely outcome here is that McCain will end up defending this, at least at the end. But then, they get, I mean, Karl Rove has recently, and I realize he's not in the White House anymore, but he's still influential, I think, for these guys, in terms of, especially in terms of their talking points. He has recently raised the prospect of $200 a barrel oil if we leave Iraq. Mm -hmm. So they are explicitly willing to tie oil and gas prices to what's going on with that conflict and what, what our troops are doing. The problem is, though, if you actually make the case to the American people that we are there for oil, well, we've spent a trillion dollars. We've lost 4,000 Americans. Mm -hmm. We've spent five years, and now we're paying $4 a gallon. We are not the beneficiaries of the war for oil. It does not redound to the American consumer. I think the real mission accomplished moment right now 
uh, that we can see in Iraq is when the oil companies getting pre-cleared by the Iraqi government to bid on the Iraq field oil field service contracts ended up on the front page of the business section last month instead of in the front page of the international section. That might have been the first true mission accomplished moment we've yet had. Dick Cheney has a complimentary basket of fruit for you. Uh, Rachel Maddow of MSNBC and Air America. Great thing.